of the book of uh, Matthew. I'm, only, I'm not going to read all of this this afternoon. I'm only going to read the last, uh, begin in verse 45 and read to the end of the chapter. So I'll stand as we honor God's word by standing. <clears throat> who then, this is where we left off, who then is faithful and wise servant whom his Lord hath made ruler over his house ho, to give them to give them meat in due season. Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Verily I say unto you that he shall make him ruler over all his goods. But and if that evil servant shall say in his heart, My Lord delayeth his coming, and shall begin to smite his fellow servants, and in and in to eat and drink with the drunken. The Lord of that servant shall come in a day when he looketh not for him, and in an hour when he is not aware of it, and shall cut him asunder, and appoint him his portion with the hypocrites. There shall he shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Again, Father, we're so thankful that you go with us. We're thankful that you watch over us. I'm thankful that that you give us leadership and preaching and in listening and in learning. Lord, I'm so thankful for that. And Lord, I just pray that each and every one here today that will uh, that they they will learn what they need to learn, and maybe maybe they'll learn some things even about themselves that they don't know. And, Lord, I just pray that you'll see fit to bless us. I'm thankful for everything, Lord. Thankful for those that have come out, back out this afternoon. We pray, Lord, that you'll bless them. We pray that you'll go with us as we go our separate ways in a little while. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. you may be seated. <clears throat> Uh, we finished up with um, the uh, the thought of who of who is faithful and wise, and we finished that up in the fact that uh, it's not wise to take your your mind off of Jesus and what He's done for you. Uh, but it is wise if you go about doing what the Lord uh, would have you do. Now. Now, if we are to understand helpless humanity, we must see what a servant of the Lord must do all the time. Now, we read to you verses, just, just read them to you, verses uh, 46 through 51. We read 45 through 51. Just read to you 46 through 51. Now, this question has a simple answer. What question? What a servant of the Lord must do all the time. All the time, not, not just some of the time, not just when they want to, not just when they feel like it, but they must do it all the time. This question has a simple answer. He must always be busy for the Lord. That's just, that's just the way it is. He must always be busy for the Lord. I'm not going to answer any question that you may have heard uh, in in you may have heard on a secret conversation over the phone about the things that it is all right to do. Sad part about it, you know, if you go to someone else, they may tell you, well, it's okay to do this. It's okay to do that. It's okay if you want to get away from the Lord. Uh, um, had a man say one time, he said, it does everybody good to get away from the Lord every now and then. I don't understand those things. I don't understand those things. I don't understand why uh, what he meant by that. But all I can say, I will preach what the Lord teaches. We, I will preach what the Lord teaches that we should be doing in these last days, such as when he cometh, shall he find us so doing. When he cometh, will he find us so doing. When he cometh, if, if, you know, if he comes today, he will find each and every one of you so doing what you're supposed to be doing. But what if he comes tomorrow? What if he comes Tuesday? What if he comes this uh, coming Saturday, you know, and, uh, and you're, you're partying and, and stuff like that? What, what happens then if he comes then? There, there is a generation who is doubting 
the Lord will ever come. Sure they are. You, you might say, well, what about this generation? You know, you know, of all the things they talk about on television, you never, ever hear anybody talk about the Lord coming back. You never hear them talk about it. They'll, they'll tell you, well, you got 12 days or 12 years to get the uh, situation straightened out with the, with, with the earth, what the earth is doing. Or you've got so long to do this. You, you've only got so long that uh, the president can maybe ma make an executive order. You only got so long for that or so long for that. You never hear anybody talk about, never hear anybody talk about uh, uh, the Lord coming back. You just don't hear it. You know, you got, uh, you, you got people, I, I li about the only channel I ever listen to is Fox and Friends, and sometimes I get tired of that. Uh, but... Um, that's the only news I ever listen to. I don't listen to anybody else's news. I listen to them. And, uh, but even though they'll talk about religious things, they'll talk about Christianity, they'll talk about being a, a Christian and this and that, but they never, ever talk about that the Lord's going to come back. You know, we have a generation that doesn't believe it. They, they, they don't believe that the Lord's going to come. And that's the reason that he will come at a time when they don't know about it. A time when they're not expecting it. You know, uh, he says in another place, he says that if, if a man knew that his house was going to be robbed, I think that's back up in verse uh, uh, 43, he said if he knew that the thief was going to come at a particular time, he'd be waiting on him. But uh, there's no way we can know when the Lord's going to come back because he says in the context in which we read today that no man knows. You, you can't sit and say, well, I'll look at the sky when the sky looks like this or the sky looks like that, then, then I'll, I'll know that it's time to start Feasting the eye up on the eastern sky. It's not going to be like that. Uh, several places Jesus has said, if you see this, if you see that, if you see this, if you see that, then you cast your eyes up on the eastern sky because he's going to return to take his children. But uh, you don't ever hear anybody talking about that today. Never hear anybody talking about it. There's, so there's a, generation, there's a generation who is doubting the Lord will ever come or he will give them a warning when he is ready to come so that they can clean up their lives. It's not going to happen. Helpless, we're talking about a helpless humanity. It's not going to happen. There's not going to be a time when the Lord say, I'll be back in a week, you better be ready. He's not, he's not going to give you time to get ready. He's not going to give you time. That's why the Bible teaches you should be ready at all times. There should never be a time in your life when you're not ready for the Lord to come back. Oh, Lord, some other day. Please, Lord, don't come back today. Some come some other day because I've got some things I need. I've heard that, folks. I've heard I've been doing this 52 years. And I've heard that over the years. People say, well, I've got, uh, I've got something I've got to do, so Lord, don't, don't come back today. Or don't come back tomorrow. Don't come back uh, then, uh, later on. I've got things I've got to do, Lord, before you come back. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Now, we're going to talk about this in just a moment. I'm not ready. They're not, he's not going to give a warning. But let me warn you today. This evil generation will pull God's children away from serving the Lord to the tune of the word and seek to teach them to serve the Lord according to their tune. You don't serve the Lord according to this Bible. This Bible's got mistakes in it. Now, that's what they say. I'm not saying that. But this Bible's got mistakes in it. This Bible's got problems in part of it. But then I, I, I listen to so-and-so because he or she, you know, that he says, well, 
he says, uh, you, you, need to, you need to dance to my tune and don't dance to the tune, tune of the Bible. Because the Bible's got, got, Bible, Bible's got mistakes in it. Well, how many mistakes do we make in our lifetime? How many mistakes do we make? You know, have you, have you ever told somebody something that you wish you never told them? You ever told somebody something to do that you, you later on you said, well, if I hadn't have told them to do that, they wouldn't be doing it. Would make, make me res responsible. You know, we, we do that. You know, we do that. And, 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 and so that's what, that's what this world wants to do. This world wants you to dance to their tune. They don't want you dancing to the tune of the Word of God. Because the Word of God teaches us that we should be ready at all times. The world says, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Everything will be okay. Everything will be okay. I, I'm here to tell you today it's not going to be, everything's not going to be okay. If you're not looking for the Lord, you're going to be totally surprised. Now, I'm not going to say you're going to die and go to hell. I'm just saying that you, if you're not looking for the Lord, there's something wrong with you. You need, to, you need to have straightened that out. Because you need to be looking for the Lord because he's going to come back someday. That's what this is all about. That's what this 24th chapter and the 25th chapter is. We're going to, uh, yes, we're going to get into the 25th chapter before this message is over with. The 24th and 25th chapter is talking about the imminent return of Christ. That he is going to come back. He's not going to tarry. He's not going to wait. He's not going to wait till you get things straightened out. He's going to come back. Just like somebody said, I believe Carmen or somebody said a few years back, said, well, maybe the Lord will come back before that happens. He's going to come back. By the Bible says in the, in, in, in the book of Hebrews, he's, he's going to come back. He's not going to tarry. He's going to return. He's not going to put it off. He's not going to say, well, there's poor old so-and-so down there. Uh, he needs to get right, so I'll just wait a little while until he gets right. Not going to do that. He's going to come back. When he comes back, he's going to come back. And for some, it's going to be too late. For some who have said all their life, well, I'm a Christian. Don't worry about me. I'm a Christian. But there's some are going to be totally surprised. It's like verses 50 and 51 says, there are going to be some who are going to be totally surprised when that time comes. You're going to think, well, I, I've been a good Christian. Uh, I, I've done this. I've done that. I've gone to church when I can go. I've gone to church uh, most of my life. I've served the Lord most of my life. Then uh, he says, it's not going to happen. You know, when he comes back and if he, if he finds you not doing what you should be doing, you're helpless. You can't say, wait, Lord, let me get straightened out. You're helpless. See, that's why we're helpless. Humanity is because <coughs> when the Lord works, excuse me, we can't do anything about it. He does it. He works. He works. He works. And he works. And we can't do a thing about his works. You know, we, we think about, well, uh, uh, if I just had done this, I wouldn't have got sick. No, you would have gotten sick anyway. If that's what the Lord wanted to do. I believe that. I believe, I believe the Lord, Lord, you get sick when the Lord wants you to get sick. And you get well when the Lord wants you to get well. I don't care what means he uses. If he uses means, that's fine. But you're going to get well when he gets ready for you to get well. And you're going to get, get your life straightened out, financial problems. You're going to get your financial problems straightened out when he gets ready for you to get them straightened out. You can't go and do things on your own to try to get them straightened out. You're going to have to trust the Lord that he's going to take care of you. Now, if we're to understand helpless humanity, we must see that this 
generation of Christians will find themselves helpless. This generation of Christians will find themselves helpless. Now let's look at Matthew 25. Let me show you something here. This is all part of this context now. This is where some people pull this out of context and make it other things. This is part of this context that I'm preaching on. Then shall the kingdom, then, that's after this other, this should follow. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. And five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels because they kept them full of oil. They watched them. They took care of them. They were aware of them. They were aware that the Lord was coming back, and so they took care of it. This generation is not doing that. They're not doing that. They're taking care of the things of the Lord when they get time. It's like Brother Kendall and I visit with somebody one time, and he said, I would come to church. He was a member of, of, of uh, Friendship Baptist Church. And he said, well, I would come to church for Sunday's the only day I've got off. He said, I don't, I don't have time to come to church. That's not, that's not going to be the case here. Those, those virgins that had their that had their lamps ready. Now I'm going to, I'm going to show you what I believe about this. Those virgins, they kept their lamps full. That's like uh, Becky will call me up sometime. She'll say, Daddy, I hope I make it because I'm running on fumes. <laughs> I said, well, why didn't you stop and fill your car before you left town? I don't know. Yeah, she knows. These virgins watched, like Becky needs to watch her gas gauge. These virgins, they watched, and they kept their lamps full because they said, maybe the Lord's going to come back today. I better fill my lamp. And the Lord did come back one day, and they were ready to go. The fifth verse says, while the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. That is, the word tarry doesn't mean that he's going to put it off. That means that he just, not time for him to come. When the bridegroom tarried, that is, when it wasn't time for him to come, what did they do? They slumbered and they slept. They parted. They did all those things they did in the days of Noah. They did all those things while, while the Lord when the Lord was waiting on the day to come, I believe with all of my heart that Jesus is up there right now saying, Lord, is, 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 is this the day? I, can't, I, I believe he can't wait to come back and get his children. I believe he's at the right-hand throne of Father right now making intercession for them, and he can't wait to come back and get them. And at midnight... You've heard that song that Karen Dever used to sing, Midnight Cry. And at midnight, there was a cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so. Helpless. These are helpless people. Saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. Oh, but that'll be too late. That'll be too late, just like Becky. You know, when she runs out of them fumes, it's going to be too late. She's going to have to park on the side of the road, call her daddy, come get her. Let me tell you, folks, it's going to be too late. You might say, well, I'll do right now. Let's make it too late. He's already come. And while they went, 
to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him in a marriage, and the door was shut. The door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. Let us in. How, how many of them in the days of Noah cried at the, at the ark? Let us see, and let us, we, we, we see now, we understand now, Noah. We understand your message. We, we know what you told us. For 120 years, he preached to them, and he, he, was a, he was a preacher of righteousness. He preached to them, preached to them about the time when, 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 when the earth was going to be flooded. And they're going to be crying outside that door, Crying outside that door, oh, let us in. We, we, we know now. We understand now. Let us in. It's too late. They're helpless. The water keeps coming up. It's okay as long as the water is above your waist. It's okay as long as the water is above your shoulders. But then that water gets above your head and you're in trouble. You're in trouble. Well, that's the same way here. He says in the 12th verse, But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. I don't even recognize you. How come I don't recognize you? Because you didn't prepare yourself. You didn't make yourself ready. You would rather go out and party than to make yourself ready. You'd rather go out and party than to go to church. You'd rather go out and party than to do this or that. You'd rather go and, and to lay on a beach than be in the Lord's house. You'd rather go into the mountains than to be in the Lord's house. You'd rather go to Disneyland than be in the Lord's house. You'd rather go to the lake than to be in the Lord's house. What's the difference? There's no difference here. When the Lord comes back, he's going to say, I don't know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. You never know. He doesn't know he's coming. But if we're to understand the helpless humanity, that this, we, we must see that this generation of Christians will find themselves helpless. Jesus is going to return. He's going to return. It may be in this service. It may be before this service is over with. It may be, it may be uh, uh, tonight, which I believe he's going to return in the daytime, but it might be tonight. It might be tomorrow. It might be Wednesday morning when you haven't prepared yourself to even be in the Lord's house Wednesday night. Jesus is going to return, ready or not. He's going to return. He's going to return at a time when humanity thinks not. In other words, he, he tells us this. There's going to be a humanity is going to be like that in those days. He tells us right now. I think I, I believe and I teach, and if you if any of you've ever listened to me before. I teach verse tw chapter 25 here is talking about churches. I think that's when churches are ready and, and when churches are not ready. Is Landmark Baptist Church ready for the Lord to return? Has this pastor got Landmark Baptist ready for the Lord to return? All of you have your lamps full of oil? All of you ready? All of you got everything together? Or are you sitting here right now thinking about, I can't wait till this over with, he shuts up. You know, I know you folks. I know you well, even though I had somebody tell me they know y'all better than I do. And it, it, it hurt me too. Because they don't know you better than I do. <clears throat> I 
when humanity has its mind set on traveling and its ears are itching to hear other things, he will slip up on them unawares. What are they going to do when they see they're not ready to go? I'm not saying they are all lost. I'm not saying that. But I am saying there will be many who will lose their rewards. That's going to be something. I, I, that's, evidently, that's going to be something when you, you say, well, uh, I'll be standing before the, uh, the judgment seat of Christ. But it's going to be something for you to lose your rewards. Because within those rewards is the bride of Christ. In those rewards are the things that you're going to that you're going to deal with throughout eternity. You're going to be without some of those rewards because you're going to lose them. You're going to lose them. I don't know what effect that will have, but I do know. I do know the great apostle Paul warned of the loss of rewards. The great apostle said, "Knowing therefore." The terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Why did he say that? Why, why did Paul say that? If, if, if everything is just wonderful, I've had people say, well, if I just get to heaven, that'd be all I care about. That's not going to be like that, though. You have these people get up. They'll get up and they sing that song. Oh, just give me a little cabin in the corner of heaven. I'll be happy. You're not going to get a cabin in the corner of heaven. If you've been doing what you should be doing, if you've been uh, alert of how you should have been alert, God's got a mansion laid up for you. He, he's got a mansion laid up for you that you're, you know, we look in a mirror today and we say, oh my, Rhonda's got a mirror in her room that makes you look slender. I, I stand in front of that mirror all the time. I don't know why I do it, but I do it. Rhonda, I went in there the other day and stood in front of that mirror, got ready, went in there. Rhonda said, don't you wish you looked like that all the time? But you, when you someday, when you stand with that new body the Lord's going to give you, you're going to be beautiful. You're going to be beautiful. There's not going to be any ugly about you. You're not going to be fat. You're not going to be skinny. You're going to be just the way the Lord wants you. You know, you're never going to cry again. Won't be no need for crying. You're never going to hurt again. All these old hands I got that hurt right now, they're not going to hurt anymore. These feet I got that I have to stand on uh, every Sunday, when I go in, I'll, I can't wait to get my feet up. They're not going to hurt anymore. Those feet aren't going to hurt anymore. Those legs that I've got are not going to hurt anymore. Oh, what a wonderful thing. What a wonderful thing it will be. But what would it be like if you're not ready? What would it be like if you hadn't made yourself ready to go? What, what does he say in the book of Revelation? A lot of people look over this. He said, uh, talks about the bride. She made herself ready for the Lord. That's what this is talking about what this is talking about there there's there are quote unquote churches out there that don't lord don't lord they don't belong to the lord they may be baptist name they don't belong to the lord they don't belong to him he's already taken the candlestick out of them he's already removed it they don't belong to him anymore he doesn't know them as one of his churches you know if they are if if, if they are one of his churches they're going to lose everything they ever got. That's why you need to pray to God that Landmark Baptist Church is one of those churches that's ready to go, ready to leave here when the Lord comes back. Are you? I'm asking you today. Are you ready when the Lord comes back? All right, let's have our business meeting, our prayer circle of prayer, and then we'll, we'll go.